Hi, I'm John, and this is the Mask Face Journal, and this is what I've been reading over the last few weeks. Let's begin with Green Arrow number 14, written by Benjamin Percy and art by Eleonora, Carlini, Carlos Rodriguez, and Gus Vasquez. This one didn't really make any sense. I guess it probably worked in script form, but the way that it was drawn, Oliver somehow gained temporary speed force powers, being able to outrun a speeding arrow. The art is terribly uneven throughout the issue, being mostly saved by a decent coloring job. Justice League vs. Suicide Squad number 3, written by Joshua Williamson and art by Jesus Marino. This continues to be pretty good. It does bring up some continuity issues though. One related to the last page reveal of the issue that I won't go into, and one when Superman recognizes Maxwell Lord. He should, that's not the problem. The problem comes retroactively that he didn't know about this Suicide Squad at the beginning. Surely this Superman must have encountered them at some point between 1986 and 2011. Star Trek Boldly Go number 4. Four, written by Mike Johnson and art by Tony Chasteen. Without giving too much away, I thought that this ending was a bit too... easy. These weren't the Borg of Wolf 359. These were the Borg of Voyager. I also don't think that the reason given for why there was difficulty during assimilation makes all that much sense. But hey, the art was good and it did feel like it belonged in the Kelvin timeline. The Flintstones, number 7, written by Mark Russell and art by Rick Leonardi. As always, this is great. Less outright jokes in this one though. It's an evaluation of humanity from an outside perspective. And even though it's very cynical in general, it's also strangely hopeful. I love it. Justice League number 12, written by Tim Seeley and art by Christian Deuce. I'm pretty sure that this was completely unnecessary. It's a tie-in to the Justice League vs. Suicide Squad event, pretty much explaining how Max Lord knew about the prisoners he had released. It also deals with his backstory and his reason for wanting revenge on Amanda Waller. It turns out that his reason and the time frame presented, it makes it really, really petty. Batman number 14, written by Tom King and art by Mitch Gerards. This was kind of nothing. I don't care for what King is doing with Catwoman, but it's not just that. I feel like he's trying too hard to evoke emotions, but it's not hitting, at least not with me. Superman number 14, story by Peter Tomasi and Patrick Gleason and art by Ivan Rice and Joe Prado. Ah, the multiverse, bringer of complications. I don't really have anything to say about this, it was certainly something I read. I feel like I should understand what is going on at the end, but surely what happens there is not applicable to the rest of the Superman, so what it means is really not that clear. Also, it seems like the criteria for being on the list is at least somewhat arbitrary. Neither Keenan Kong nor the Red Sun Superman is actually Kryptonians. So there are monsters just going after people calling themselves Superman? Are those the rules? And now I'm switching over to the second week's haul. Titans number 7 written by Dan Abnett and art by Lee Weeks. This is pretty good. The main event, the meeting between Wally and Superman is well handled, if not a bit of a tease, putting out how things are different from how they were, but not really exploring it. Good thing that the setup for the story arc is pretty interesting. It seems like the villain they're going to use is someone I've known virtually nothing about except for his appearances in the Jung Justice TV show. Supergirl number 5 written by Steve Orlando and art by Brian Ching. I want to say that this is decent, but it's really dragged out. It feels to me to be written for a trade as not enough story progress is made month to month. I don't really have any logical or characterizational problems with the story, just mainly that it has pacing problems in this format. Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows number 3, written by Jerry Conway and art by Ryan Stegman. My amazing powers of prediction turned out correct. This issue is indeed told from Annie's point of view. What I initially thought to be confusing writing in a timeline of event that didn't make sense turns out to be something different. A possible evolution of the spider sense it seems. That isn't exactly new when it comes to spider progeny, but it's not quite like it is here. I'm not completely sure of how I feel about this issue in general. I'd like to get a bit further in before I make any judgement. Something that must be said however is that a villain like Mole Man shouldn't really pose that big of a threat to someone like Spider-Man. Not even with a T-Rex at his disposal. Wonder Woman number 14, written by Greg Rock and art by Nicola Scott. As usual, this is quite good. Even though the resolution to the crisis was achieved, 
through literal divine intervention. I think that I'm really going to miss these early days Wonder Woman parts. If we could call this a year one of sorts, I think something akin to what The Long Halloween did for Batman should be tried with Wonder Woman. The Flash number 14, written by Joshua Williamson and art by Carmine Di Giannamenico. Yay, rogues. I thought this issue was really good, I admit, the fact that it's about the rogues probably helped. One question did really jump at me at this though, how come Harley Quinn can be in the Suicide Squad and have her own book at the same time but Captain Boomerang can't be used for the Flash? Anyway, I think this is a good setup and I'm looking forward to read more. Come on, give me some Captain Cold up in here. Batgirl and the Birds of Prey number 6, written by Julian, Shauna Benson and art by Rogue Antonio. This has been... Alright, a bit shaky in places and I'm not aboard with this new oracle but the book isn't either it seems so whatever. Huntress has to make a choice in this book and it is a choice I'm not sure she'd make if it had been before the new 52. In fact, I think she'd make the opposite one and then go on to be pissed off at Batman or whomever for not letting go through with it. But then again I'm not all that familiar with pre-new 52 Birds of Prey anyway, so I might be wrong. Justice League vs Suicide Squad number 4, written by Joshua Williams and an art by Fernando Pazarin. Yep, this is good. Action, banter, good pacing, escalating stakes, this works for me. It's not an especially deep or complex story, but it is fun. Detective Comics number 948, written by James Tinney and the Fourth and Marguerite Bennett, an art by Ben Oliver. This is pretty cool. It builds some previous stories with new ideas that make sense. There isn't really all that much to discuss in this yet, it is just establishing the foundations for the story, but it does it well, and I'm very interested. Quick note, do I detect a hint of Pacific Rim influence in this? All-Star Batman number 6, written by Scott Snyder and art by Jock. I might be stupid, but I don't really get it. Oh, I understand the events that are taking place, but I think I'm probably missing subtext. It goes hand in hand with how it's written. It's like a book, everything is told through narration boxes, even the dialogue by third person narrator. It is, let's say, not my preferred way of reading comics. It looks pretty cool though, no pun intended. Action Comics number 971, written by Dan Jurgens and art by Steven Segovia. Well, well. I'll be damned if this isn't calling back to the old Silver Age story, the showdown between Luther and Superman. It's obviously quite different, but still, things are beginning to happen now with this other Clark Kent, and that is what I'm really interested in. The stuff with Lex and Superman is pretty standard, but there's a few glimmers of interest there as well. So that is what I've been reading these last few weeks in between textbook about user interface design and gestalt psychology, which is, you know, very interesting. Did you enjoy this video? Please like, comment, subscribe and share this video. If you didn't enjoy it or disagree with me, please let me know in the comments and I am done for this week.